unlocks the airbuds, we can simply lift the top of the box like this and we'll be greeted with the airbuds inside of a wireless charging case. To see what else is inside the box, we can get rid of the dividers. We get additional air tips that come in different sizes. We also have a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, and I believe this cable is one feet long. And finally, we get a quick start guide and safety information. All right, so let's take a closer look at the airbuds. As you can see, we have the number two sized air tips attached to them. If we want to switch these out with the other air tips, it's pretty easy to do. We can simply remove them like this and attach the new ones. I found that the number two size tips were good for me, but it really depends on which feels comfortable for you. All right, let's take a closer look at the charging case. All right, right off the bat, I noticed that the charging case is larger than the AirPods charging case. We can do a size comparison here to see the difference. And as you can see, the Bose charging case is a little larger in width and height. Now, I do lose my AirPods case sometimes, so I can see having a big case as a good thing. It's something I'll just have to get used to carrying around. Now on the front of the case, you have five LED lights to indicate the charging level. I like this feature since I don't always have to check my phone to see how much battery is left. Now if we flip to the back, we have the port to connect our USB-C charger. It will usually take two hours to get a full charge of the earbuds, and the battery life for the earbuds are about six hours. Now there's also quick charge time, which takes 15 minutes for two hours of listening time. The battery charge method is USB-C, and you can also use a certified wireless charging pad. The battery type is lithium-ion, and the earbuds have automatic on-off feature to preserve battery life. The case does support wireless charging, so if you have a wireless charger, it will work. To open up the case, we can just press the button like that, and it will open, which is a little different from the AirPods case, where you can just simply lift the case open. I actually like this mechanism a little better uh, as I'm less likely to accidentally press the button and open the case if it's in my pocket or if it's in my backpack and something is pressed into it. Inside the case we have the headphones as well as a Bluetooth button to pair the earbuds with your device. The case will charge the earbuds anytime they're inside and it will also power off the earbuds when they are inserted into the case. As far as holding onto the headphones, the case does an okay job of securing them inside and not letting them fall. Here's me shaking the case up and down, and as you can see, the headphones do move around a little bit and almost look like they're about to fall. In some cases, they have fallen out. Now, obviously, this isn't something you do, but this is just to demonstrate how well the case secures the headphones. So one reason for this might be that the magnets are only located on the bottom of where the earbuds go in, so you don't have any magnets on the top part, leaving the earbuds unbalanced and prone to falling out. I wish the case was a little bit more secure and hopefully that's something they add in the next iteration of these headphones. Now you can remove and insert the earbuds pretty easily. The magnets are strong enough so you don't have to press them inside when you want to insert them in. And they stick pretty quickly. So one thing I've noticed over time is that the case is a little hard to open sometimes. You kind of have to press the button a few times to get it to open. And while I do like this mechanism better than the one found on the AirPods, uh, I can also see this button becoming a little better. And again, this is something I hope they fix in the next iteration. All right, let's now move on to the headphones. So the surface here pretty much acts like your control center. The touch surface on the left earbud has the noise cancellation feature where you can turn it on and off. And unlike the AirPods, you don't need your phone to turn it on. You can also control the amount of noise cancellation from the AirBud by double tapping and cycling through the different levels. And the cool thing is that it tells you which mode you're in just in case you forget. On the right AirBud is where we have our touch surface to control media playback. So you can do things like play or pause music by double tapping on the surface or adjust the volume by sliding your finger up and down. We can also answer or decline calls by double tapping on the surface to answer and holding the surface to end a call. So my thoughts on the touch feature is that it works great and does what it needs to. It's nice to have in comparison to something like the AirPods where you have a different type of control mechanism. So the AirBuds come with two different noise cancellation modes, active mode and aware mode. Active is basically like regular noise cancellation like you'd find on any other Bose product. One cool thing about this noise cancellation is that when you take off one earbud, the other one goes into transparency mode so you can hear everything around you with it. 
It's a great feature if you are talking to someone or just need to shut off the noise cancellation for a minute and don't have to do it from your phone or tapping the earbuds. Like most other Bose headphones, we can also use the Bose Connect app to customize the earbuds. I don't use the app all the time, but one feature I do use is the EQ settings. So I can go into the app and adjust the EQ for the earbuds. I like a little extra bass in my music so I can go in and select bass boost and it will adjust the sound to that. From the app, you can also switch the audio modes, which I'm not sure why you want to do since you can do it right from the earbuds, but it's nice to have. You can also add shortcuts to the earbuds. I haven't really used this feature, but my understanding is that it's basically going to let you add customized touch controls, which I guess is cool if you use it. All right, let's talk about sound. So the first thing I noticed when I was playing music was the bass. It's much richer than the AirPods, and you can really feel it in your ears when the bass is going. I thought the vocals were a lot clearer too from the AirPods. The sound stage is very good and you definitely get a lot of detail in the sound. And what I mean by this is that you can really hear all the little sounds they add in music that you don't always hear unless you have a good pair of headphones, which includes these AirBuds. Overall, I was pretty impressed with the sound quality. I use these mainly with the noise cancellation on. I think there is a better listening experience when the noise cancellation is on and it just makes the sound much more fuller. That's not to say that the other sound modes aren't good, but listening to them and noise cancellation was my preferred option. And alright, that's just a quick look at the Bose QuietComfort earbuds. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and give this video a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video.